Hey, everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. I have a major update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. 34-year-old Joshua James is an Army veteran, he's an Alabama resident, and he's also a member of the Oath Keepers. He was one of those Oath Keepers who was charged with seditious conspiracy, which is, you know, basically you're trying to take down the United States. And everyone has balked at that idea. You know, they balked at the idea of seditious conspiracy being proven in a court of law. It seemed like it was a tough haul because there have been other cases and they seem to be even stronger, yet they couldn't make it stick in court. Well, that was until yesterday when it was announced that James has taken a cooperation deal. He's agreed to plead guilty to not just that charge, not just seditious conspiracy, but also obstructing an official proceeding. So each one of those crimes comes with a maximum 20-year sentence. So U.S. District Judge Amit Mehta is presiding over this Oath Keepers case, the conspiracy case, and James went before the court yesterday and confirmed that he plans to fully cooperate with the Department of Justice and their investigation. And James's plea deal states in part, quote, in advance of and on January 6, 2021, James and others agreed to take part in the plan developed by Rhodes to use any means necessary up to and including the use of force to stop the lawful transfer of presidential powers. Not good. And the Rhodes that they're referring to, of course, is Stuart Rhodes. He's the founder of the Oath Keepers. He was just recently charged with seditious conspiracy along with these others. But in addition to that verbiage in, in this agreement, James also admitted to assaulting an officer while he was in the Capitol. He admitted to intending to use force. However, the assault charge is going to be dropped, obviously, under this plea agreement. This the statement of offense tied to this plea deal also notes that James intended to influence, affect, or retaliate against the U.S. government, and that he used intimidation and coercion to achieve that goal. James also had to acknowledge in the statement of offense um, that he knew of the large cache of weapons that the Oath Keepers had taken with them and stashed at a hotel in Virginia. People are still trying to deny that, which is ridiculous. There is so much documentation about what what they call the QRF, the Quick Reaction Force. It's unreal. They've got photos of these people's, you know, these these men, these Oath Keepers. Uh, men and women coming in with gun cases, rolling them in on luggage carts and then leaving with them. It's, you know, and all the messages back and forth of them talking about it. Anyway, he also confirmed that Stuart Rhodes, again, the leader of the Oath Keepers, instructed all of them to delete incriminating evidence and to, quote, stay below the radar. So that was after January 6th. Then the document also notes that the group planned for future violence because it stated that, quote, James departed Texas in February 2021. At Rhodes' instruction, James took with him multiple firearms, thousands of rounds of ammunition, multiple burner phones, scopes, magazines, night vision equipment, and other tactical gear. Rhodes told James to be prepared to transport and distribute the equipment to others upon Rhodes' instruction and to be prepared for violence in the event of a civil war. James stored this equipment in a storage shed in Alabama and awaited Rhodes' instructions. So they had spent all of those weeks after January 6th together, James went down to Texas where Rhodes was, was living and they were all together. He and Rhodes and a bunch of other Oath Keepers were all basically trying to figure out their next move from the way it sounds and planning on future violence. And then Rhodes, as I detailed in his video short, was running around buying 
all kinds of weaponry and ammunition, scopes, all kinds of stuff. He spent literally tens of thousands of dollars on weapons and ammunition and then, uh, you know, other items for those weapons. So James's guilty plea is especially huge. I mean, not only is it the first guilty plea of an Oath Keeper for seditious conspiracy, um, but it's a huge get for the prosecutors because James is one of the Oath Keepers who acted as a private bodyguard for Trump ally, um, you know, all around white supremacist scumbag Roger Stone. And due to the nature of these crimes, especially that seditious conspiracy charge, James could receive the longest sentence handed down so far. Like I said, each of these two crimes that he pleaded guilty to, each one comes with a 20-year maximum sentence. Now, most of the time, as people have pointed out on the show, on the, on the comments, they don't serve those sentences consecutively. They're, they're served concurrently. So they typically don't give them you know, 40 years for the two. Um, also, sentencing guidelines are for some reason typically much lower than the maximum. And, you know, it's based on a lot of things, your criminal history, aggravating circumstances, the nature of the crime and so forth. Um, and according to Judge Mehta, sentencing guidelines for both of these charges for seditious conspiracy and the obstruction charge range from 87 to 108 months. So approximately seven to 10 years in prison, give or take a few months. Of course, based on his level of cooperation, you know, whether or not they believe he's being truthful, if they catch him in lies, prosecutors could ask for a reduction in that, or they could ask for an increase in sentencing. You know what Trump will be doing over that same seven to 10 years? It's probably still going to be golfing. I mean, based on the way Merrick Garland is handling things, he's probably still going to be golfing. He's probably still going to be, you know, slopping up cheeseburgers. So was it worth it? Was it worth it for a guy who has not given you a second thought since he left office, James. Anyway, this has got to put some fear into the other Oath Keepers who are facing the same charge because now they, they lost it. They lost their opportunity to be the first and to give up everything that they know. Now it's useless in, in many cases, unless they have something else to offer and contribute to the story that James hasn't, they're out of luck. They missed their chance. The window of opportunity slammed shut. So, and it's going to make it harder for them to now go to court and say, oh, yeah, yeah, well, that guy pleaded guilty and he said it was a conspiracy, you know, to co commit sedition against the United States. But I didn't, you know, I wasn't a part of that, even though look at all these messages I sent back and forth to the same people who took part. In, in every single thing that he did. Makes it a little bit harder for them. Anyway, I will let you guys know if I hear more. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care. I'll talk with you soon.